My continuous comment from the beginning of this was if the cost share de uh, agreement that comes down doesn't, doesn't give us more clarity, uh, I'm going to have a very difficult time moving forward. And I don't think today's conversation did that for me. Um, Yesterday's, yesterday's decision and yesterday's council meeting was uh, the most difficult in my five years in politics. And um, it was difficult uh, in large part because we've worked so incredibly hard uh, as a committee and as a council to move this project forward. And council has supported this project. Not everybody, but time and time again, through all of these votes, council supported this. And this, our municipal government as politicians has touched this file day to day as politicians way more than any of the other orders of government. In fact, I'm consistently surprised how little, how little of the even most basic knowledge our federal and provincial counterparts know, political counterparts know. And um, I think as a council, we should be really, really proud of that. Um, um, and it's a tougher thing to do because we are not a majority government. <laughs> we all have our own individual interests and projects and values. And so this conversation for all of the Olympics conversations that happen around the world are really tough at the municipal level because we do not, do not have the benefit of a majority government where the prime minister or the premier and cabinet can make those decisions unilaterally because they are a majority government. But despite that, over three years, we have slogged this out. Um, and it has been divisive for a lot of us. Um, I've never been a part of something so complex. This is an unbelievably complex financial transaction. Uh, and most transactions don't exist like this ever in the world that have this many different partners and stakeholders. And so I had always been OK with the risks. I all, we always talked about them, and we knew them. Um, but and OK with the money, and OK with the changes. I was very, very struggled with moving. And we knew this was going to evolve over the coming years. But after we committed to this plan, it was a losing proposition to go in it and gut not gut, well, 10% to drop numbers, 10% on Calgarians. And uh, we did that after a provincial government solid, will not move commitment of 700 million, a federal government that would not move past the 50%, and an IOC who would not move, not a dime last week when they, t they told us that they would not move past that number. And, um, I became increasingly uh, concerned, really. I, 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 have, I have been very optimistic about this project and worked uh, um, very hard on it. But when the provincial government, and actually I want to touch on the principles of negotiation that I'll go back to that I've uh, hung my hat on, uh, is you need to have shared interest, good communication, respect and trust as a foundation of a negotiation to move forward. And when the provincial government dropped 700 million on us, I was very surprised because I always thought that a cost share agreement, we would all walk out together and do that. And they stuck to their guns and their, uh, uh, in wanting to do that. And I became really worried about that when that happened. Um, a couple of other things that really uh, put me where I am today. Uh, I'm, we did took a prenatal class, and my wife went to a baby's movie about three weeks ago. And she asked the question, should we post it? And I know this is an anecdote, and we've shared anecdotes throughout this process, but it was a, a, an important anecdote for me um, because this was all young moms under 40 with children my age, and not one of them out of nine of them were interested in hosting the games. And that, that is a demographic of people that I thought would be really important to support this. Um, on Monday, uh, I listened to an interview with the sport minister um, that made me really worried. Um, 
we've maybe lived and breathed this file very deeply, but the unwillingness to move past that 50%, um, the disconnect between what, what I was hearing and seeing on the ground, um, it, it, really, it, really, it really bothered me. And then again, uh, after conversations and have hosting the IOC in town here, um, the headline reading, we're not moving past the number that we've committed to, uh, uh, was, was very difficult for me. Um, all of the information, the promise that we made to Calgarians, that all of the information to make an informed decision, we haven't been able to deliver on that. And that was a commitment that we made as a council. Um, I don't have confidence that the numbers um, are gonna add up. And I don't know that, that Calgarians do too. We had, we, we, we managed to cut $285 million after a federal, provincial government and federal government would not move. Um, and and I, I think that we'll find, we have the potential to find efficiencies throughout this process, but to have this happen at this juncture, I, 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 I found very difficult. I'm, un, I'm uncomfortable with the risks associated with the other orders of government not carrying better guarantees. And an interesting thing, today I never heard once, maybe once Ms. Moran mentioned uh, the game's values. Better together, being well, respect the land, dream big, stay true. That did not come up in conversation once today and I have not heard that in the community at all. The economic arguments are ones that I absolutely supported and that is all we heard today. Investment in the downtown, GDP growth and all of those things which are super, super important to the city and was one of the driving reasons why I was super interested in the opportunity before us. But if you're gonna make the basis of, of that as your argument, and we do not have the financial deal in front of Calgarians, um, that just doesn't add up for me. And Calgarians needed to be brought along in a vision of this process and that I sat in the original visioning process when we talked about lifting each other up and I haven't heard that once in the last number of months. And so um, I, I, I can't support this moving forward and that is unbelievably disappointing and I can't tell you how many people have emailed me and called me in the last 12 hours expressing their deep disappointment in me. Um, and that's difficult. Um, for eight months, every two weeks, the assessment committee met and we walked out in front and said, this is what we're gonna do, this is what we're gonna commit to. And we had to continually shift that line in the sand. And three or four days before advanced polling, when people have actually already voted, we're now saying, this is the deal. How could you not communicate this? How can you not support this? This is the deal in front of us. And that's not fair to Calgarians because we promised them that we'd do that. And we didn't bring them along we collectively uh, didn't bring them all along this process and we didn't communicate them to them properly. Um, just this year, we were uh, again voted the, f the best city in the Western Hemisphere to live in and the fourth best city to live in in the world. And um, that didn't happen by accident, right? We've been doing an incredible job of running the city, of working together, of building community and uh, the Olympics had the opportunity to be that vision for me, but I just am not there. And I don't think it's fair or right uh, that we ask Calgarians um, to make an emotional decision and not a fact-based one. Thank you.